श्रीमती राधिका रिशन मिल लगा रे सुंदर सुंदर कथा कोईया ओ रे श्रीमती राधिका कृष्ण Hello guys Baul is a traditional folk music from Bengal and Bangladesh but do you know the history of Baul music do you know that Baul has some connection with Buddhism and interestingly do you know that the Hindu god Lord Shiva is considered as the first Baul yogi yes you have guessed it right i am in mood for some Baul music today and my guest today is on the phone lines from Kerala and she is one of the famous Baul singers of this country and she is none other than Parvati Baul Parvati Di has been kind enough to be a part of this podcast and I shall talk with her about her musical journey and her life as a yogini. So without any further delay, let's begin this conversation. Drop the mic. An unscripted podcast hosted by Devash Gahadraj. Hi Parvati Di, how are you? I'm very fine, thank you. It is such an honor to talk to you and thank you for accepting, you know, and being a part of this journey of podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. I heard your interview and I was very impressed by your interview. Glad you liked it, Didi. So, Parvati Di, let's start from the beginning. How was your growing up days? Was there was there a musical mahal in the family? Yes, very much because what I hear from my parents is that my grandfather, he did theater. kind of singing theater kind of folk opera and he was a singer who used to sing in very high pitch he was a actor singer i mean that was not his profession uh, professionally he was something else but he he did it and he inspired the whole community to do it and uh, our family come from chittagong bangladesh and so he had the theater group there folk opera group there my father was uh, an engineer in the railway uh, that's why we have traveled to many parts Uh, of assam and some parts in bengal north bengal my father was very fond of music uh, his children to learn music art dance and all the other you know creative work just like education you know education was also given a lot of importance but at the same time this part of growth inner growth was given a big attention by my father and he really when i think about him now i see how much effort he gave for us to learn about music but just to add a little bit of humor is that we were completely bla- banned from listening to bollywood music <laughs> we were only allowed to listen to very serious music dhrupad classical music or devotional and rabindra sangeet of course these were the categories that my father allowed us and of course folk folk music he also allowed we lived in small towns and we didn't really have great masters in those places maybe some folk masters were there so what he did is that he used to invite ustad from kolkata and other places we have heard you know prashun banerji and there was master satyabhata roy he used to come and teach us all the way from kolkata so he used to organize concerts classical concerts wow. and wow. when he started teaching us you know it, it became our house became a gurukula because uh, the teacher used to come and live with us for 3 4 days in those days there were not so many flights or anything like that there was days to come by train huh. and it used to take 2 days and after that they cannot go back immediately so they used to stay for 4 5 days with us and then leave and in these 4 5 days the house is to turn into a gurukula and he encouraged all the children from around you know whoever was there to learn music so all the children from the neighborhood used to come and learn music at our home 
so that's how you know i grew up music was from morning till night in our house wow what an incredible upbringing so nice parvati ji growing up days you spent couple of years in north bengal no you said kuch bihar not couple of years i spent 10 years okay so almost your childhood was here no yes did you uh, listen to the uh, music from our side like bhavaiya and Hmm of course I remember music and dance all the time and the first music that I was exposed to is Indian classical music because that's what was happening in our house but beyond that the first thing that my father introduced me was uh, Gwalpariya Lokogiti because where we lived you know is Fokira gram is very close to Koch Bihar and there is uh, one place called Gwalpara and the songs belong to that and so is very close to babaiya coach bihar i think gwalpara one of the exponents is pratima borwa no yes i have spent some days learning from her also wow how lucky you so gwalpariya was the one then boro geet bihu geet akhomia geet and then uh, after we came down to coach bihar then babaiya babaiya or something so from my childhood i have all this memory that uh, the folk traditions around Parvati ji I know that you came to Shanti Niketan as a student to learn fine arts in Kala Bhavan and what happened how how did this you know student of fine art choose baul music how did this happen This is interesting question because I myself was surprised <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah when I was coming to Shanti Niketan I happened to meet a baul he was blind and he had an ektara you know in those days the milk powder used to come in tin you remember yes 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 I yeah know. and so he put bamboo around it and it had a metallic sound but still it had the sound of ektara i never seen an ektara before and i have not heard baul music before except my father had some long play records of purnadas baul and and one more person i don't remember the name now but i used to listen to those records but i didn't know it as a baul music or something like that i knew it's a beautiful song what used to attract me is they sing so high and the note is very long that used to you know inspire me so uh, when i saw him in the train uh, i had an experience of you know losing my consciousness of i forgot where i was sitting and i forgot that it was a train and there were hawkers you know hawking and i could hear nothing i could hear nothing i could hear only the ektara and the song that he was singing and as if it was a call from very far and someone was calling me but i did not you know understand the language uh, it was bengali of course but you know the metaphor and the meaning that i didn't understand but i knew that there is a there is something that calls me and then when i gain back my consciousness and the reality uh, i realized that i should not listen to the baul song anymore because if i listen to the baul song anymore i'm definitely going to be a baul and then my aim <laughs> to come and study at shantiniketan i will not be able to fulfill you know so this was very clear so then uh, i started avoiding wherever i see baul and ektara i would go to another place because i didn't want but you know what happened after i admitted in shantiniketan my first you know assignment from my teacher was to go to poshmala and to draw the bowls their sketch <laughs> so i ended up listening hours and hours of baul and you know what happened to me so you get to a different world yeah I also have a similar kind of experience you know like when I was first coming to Shanti Niketan from Siliguri in Darjeeling Mail so even uh, I think uh, somewhere near Rampurhat uh, Baul singer border the train and he was singing early in the morning and I was even yeah, very very touched with his music so this is then what happened then I met my teacher first one year i practiced with fulmala dashi i decided to learn from her because i was very uh, touched by her Uh, and also i i loved her music her voice was so pure right from the heart and it was direct and raw in some way so uh, i asked her whether she would uh, teach me then she agreed and i followed her for a year and after that she told me that if i wanted to go deep 
deeper into the bowl then not only music i have to receive the life of a bowl so if i have to receive the life of a bowl i must find a guru get initiated and follow the path i told her that why don't you become my guru then she told me that i don't have that authority you must find someone who has that authority to initiate so i happened to see sanatan das baul in in kala bhavan only and again i was when i saw him i have a feeling of i know him for a long time and i could immerse you know absorb in his music with the first note he sang and uh, and i i can easily relate myself to that you know i can imagine myself to be him to be with him so i went to him i followed him for 25 years he left his body uh, in 2015 till you know since that time i followed him after the initiation process how many how many years has happened after the initiation process i think i i am practicing for 26 years now so pamitidi what was the first reaction from your family when you told them that you don't want to continue the mainstream education and then you want to become a bowler <laughs> my thing my smile tells everything <laughs> okay <laughs> no it was a big big shock for the family because uh, they didn't know you know it was not a career that much they knew they knew that whether she is going mad or she is you know she needs some help you know so they even consulted the doctors to help my mental stability so i mean that happened so, okay. not because my parents were doubtful about me they were never but they were kind of given pressure by the other people to you know say that your daughter is you know i th- we think that your daughter may be maybe addicted maybe something happened something happened so have a test so after listening that they're going to test me i never went back home so <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, are, are your parents uh, are they li- are they alive uh, how do they react now uh, my father passed away this year uh, during april 2020 he had dementia for 5 years now and so after that he left his body but you know i found back my my with my mother i never had any communication gap because she is a devotee uh, of sri ramakrishna and she always encouraged me to go in the path she said to me that you found the right way and follow it my f- uh, father and me had some communication gap because we had too much love between us because he gave me a lot of training in dance and music and he wanted me to sing and dance at the same time since my childhood okay. i am doing singing and dancing at the same time except i am a baul <laughs> yes so uh, <laughs> there was a communication gap uh, it took some years but you will be surprised that at the towards the end uh, he he told me that actually this was the right decision i made because this is fulfilling and uh, this has a life beyond art you know what i mean uh, it it nourishes a person it nourishes the soul so then he said will you teach me the songs will you teach me ektara and i wow. i i carried an wow. ektara for him to my home and he learned from me till he he started having dementia so he was singing with that time so there's a full circle complete circle no from no to accepting so this this is a way of life that you are that you chose at that young age was it difficult to live as a yogini to live as a mystic well it is always uh, difficult as baul say uh, though baul call the path mm-hmm. as sahaj uh, but it is uh, not that okay. sahaj <laughs> because <laughs> because we say that there is always you know a possibility to slip your feet so you must remain alert and mm-hmm. awake mm-hmm. because the whole process of a yogi is not to give in to the senses right so that is quite a difficult because emotion is something that you can subside it by meditation or something but maybe you fall into a situation where you can forget everything because the emotion or the senses are so powerful that it takes away your chaitanyam or your ability to have a clear judgment or clear decision about you know that this is right this is wrong or 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 
this is the truth or false so it can overtake and then uh, when it overtakes we can make mistake so this is why the bible say that the path is slippery and uh, there is a beautiful expression that it is like the shakharir karat you know people who cut the conch so they have a kind of sword little knife we call karat and it both side is sharp so a yogi's life is like that you mean to say that you never slipped in the uh, world of fancy and you know like all the materialism mm this is a tough question because you must be having your contemporary your colleagues your friends who are having a job a, way, a certain kind of a lifestyle and you are here singing baul song and living a life of a yogini that somewhere you know you felt that i think you no know, i should also try this no 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 never because i am i have found my ananda my happiness in here and it is very fulfilling and i am so blessed that i could be touched by a baul and uh, i could touch this uh, sound that fills our body ultimately we carry nothing with us and uh, if i can be of any service to the mankind in this way with the voice with the music serving my songs i am fulfilled as the baul baul say that i am the flute of your breath the way you play me i play wow what is a typical day like for you what do you do throughout the day when we are young that time we can do a lot more practice with the physical effort and things like that so uh, in the earlier time i was doing a lot of physical work through the day in the sense practicing and preparing but now it has more turned into yoga so when we get up we do some practice of yoga then we have certain things to complete every day you know like nama japa and all of that singing is must and anyway we sing every day then contemplate compose and you know feed yourself with more uh, literature of other masters you can think and you know evolve in your art there is endless i mean the the way you can grow with your work see there is so many aspects in the baul songs there is music there is dance there is body movement there is ektara there is dugi so you can get so many possibility we almost sing every day just before lockdown i was singing almost every day because you know concert was happening so i could i didn't need to rehearse or anything like that because i was just going on singing the practice was happening while the concert was going on your practice must remain 24 hours even when you sleep that's what we say so it is not necessary that you sit down and sing all the time maybe you are not singing but your mind should be focused on the sound oh parvati so talking about songs and singing this interview will not be complete if you if you cannot be able to hear one song from you oh yes yeah, sure definitely so i will sing a song of bhaba pagla Uh, and i just composed it this morning oh, wow. <laughs> so i have been working on song so i'm singing it first time for you wow kali prem sindhu nire dube tha komon dube tha काली प्रेम सिंधु नीरे डूबे था कमो डूबे था को आतल ताले तलिए जये आतल ताले तलिए को माके डाको काली प्रेम सिंधु नीरे डूबे था को मन डूबे था को शीतल हावे दप I 
questions to be done so thank you so much parvati ji that was so nice thank you thank you divash parvati ji i have i have few more questions for you there are a lot of listeners uh, who would be interested to know a little bit about baul tradition so if you could educate us a little bit so baul is a yogic tradition and when we ask who is the first baul we will always say shiva is the first baul Uh, why shiva is the first baul because he is the one who is nataraj who dance he is panchanon who has five heads and he sings and he is the one who plays rudra veena you know he is the one who played the veena for the first time so he is a complete musician and he is a great yogi and his ways are different than other gods because you know he left his a uh, golden palace in kashi he went and sat as kal bhairav in cremation ground and baul they leave away the fancies and the glittering materialistic life of the world and they go and sit under a tree so shiva is a baul and bauls have learned the way of baul from him and later so there is a link coming from the natha siddha 
parampara and you have seen there have been great nath yogis and they have written couplets which gives us the wisdom for is the gorakhnath and all others and if you look at their couplets and you look at the couplets that is doha that is what we call uh, is uh, by the bowels there is so much similarity you know they're talking about non attachment with the simple metaphor of life baul is a parampara which is a meeting point or the melting pot you can say where many other traditions have come and met there is a sufi parampara there is both siddhas from where the shahojiya this name came from the buddhism then there is tantra of course and i have said nath siddha so there are the shaiva and fakir the way of the fakirs so all that have come together and the later it was you know enriched by the bhakti which is the vaishnava parampara so this is so the bhakti movement you mean yeah the bhakti movement from sri chaitanya mahaprabhu so he is he had four disciples and they went to different path among them nityananda mahaprabhu and his son sri virabhadra they had gathered all this uh, sampradaya that is of nath of bodha sahajya of tantra together and gave them uh, this harinam mahamantra and that's how it has become the baul uh, so basically uh, reaching to the divine through music is that is that can be said yeah yeah that? of course uh, the whole point is baul is a nad upasaka for example some people do puja some people do meditation some people go into retreat you know in the caves and sit there silently baul took the songs and the sound of the universe as because the what resonates in my body jaha ache ei bhande taha dekhi brahmande jaha ache brahmande taha dekhi bhande whatever resonates in me resonates in the in the universe whatever resonates in the universe resonates in me so if we understand that resonance because everything is created from the sound and we celebrate with music parvati ji when i listen to the works and the songs of bulle shah from northern part of india and pakistan and when i listen to baul music there's lot of usage in the lyrics of the songs a lot of uses like bulla and when they say the word bulla basically referring the name even in baul we say lalon bole or maybe you were singing the song which is a sang he said baba pagla so why these words of the or the names of the authors are used is there any kind of a, a symbolism there see mostly these traditions were oral traditions and the the poets they created they kept their signature in that poetry so when you sing the name of the poet you actually acknowledging the composer with that so that you know their ego does not does not come up because baul is also a practice of humility and correct, uh, correct. but the main reason is because it's a oral tradition and people learned by listening from each other and when the baul carried the songs they would sing in a sadhu gathering and it will be passed on to another sadhu so there was no question of you know writing down or exchanging a book or copyright or <laughs> authority nothing like that only the signature remained of the poet in the song yeah and i guess today in today's world in today's generation all we need is a little bit of love and what better way than to celebrate life and love through music isn't it so of course if you really look at in our life what we will be most pleased with suppose if you go to a house and they tell you so much bad things but they give you a diamond necklace will you like it will you will you withstand all the all the torture all the abuse and re- to receive the diamond necklace i don't think so if you go to a hut of somebody and this person invites you with love with full respect and she, the, maybe this person has nothing to share so he shares or she shares half chapati from her plate with you will you stay there where we will you will you stay will you stay at the diamond necklace place with the abuse or you stay with the half chapati with the person who loves you i think the love will be more attractive for me personally yes this is what we all want even animal or tree just give love and how they respond to you you will see this is what we need and in this world it is becoming rare because people have started to distancing him themselves so much uh, it's a time to find back our humanity and connect with each other 
सो यस पर्वतिदि टेल मी अबाउट योर आश्रम एक तारा कलाड़ी where where does it stand now what's the progress in shantini i uh, started ektara kalari with shri ravi gopalan nayar in uh, many years ago uh, maybe uh, uh, 98 i started the ektara kalari but it was in a very small uh, you know place in from where i'm sitting and talking to you is tribandrum i'm sitting here in ektara kalari which is a old uh, ancestral house so we met many masters here and i was mostly learning from many teachers so that was my turn of learning and then uh, ektara kalari expanded because shanatan baba my teacher and guru he gave me the vision of creating a space for the ancient baul tradition and to keep all the you know there are different schools in baul and to bring them together yeah so so his vision was to create a gurukula for baul to make it a process of learning and exchanging that he told me to continue and that's how sanatan siddhashram which is situated uh, 12 kilometers from shantiniketan in uh, near to kopai yeah station is 5 kilometers away from the station so we have started that and we conduct retreat we conduct uh, I have my students I teach there uh, we will also create an archive of baul wisdom and songs there are many teachers from different schools of baul who come and teach i am not on, not the only teacher and also teachers from bangladesh fakhi tradition they come and they teach uh, there are also some seva work that we do we do medical camp which is completely ayurvedic because this is also something beside music Uh, I love uh, the traditional system. I'm I'm conscious about the traditional system of medicine, which I think should be reintroduced to our lives, especially in the villages and all where the herbs are available. And if we know how to make our own medicine, for small things we don't end up in a hospital, and you know, and or expose our body to very heavy drugs. It's not necessary. So this is also part of Baul because the Baul master is always talking about health, you know, maintaining your health and your well-being. So this is something that I'm working on gradually. You know, we have a Kabiraji system in West Bengal, and I'm stud- studying more deeply. And I am in association with some Kabiraji practitioners who come to ashram, the doctors, and they treat people completely free consultation, completely free medicine, and everything. And we have children's camp, so we teach yoga, baul music to the children from surrounding area. Interesting. And another thing I love, and I want to study more, and I'm studying. Beside, if I was not a baul, I would have become a farmer. I'm doing a lot of organic farming so that we grow enough food for the ashram so that we are independent and not buy and consume things from outside and also eat healthy, you know. because we grow it with our own hand so we uh, we can uh, people who come to learn to teach they can all uh, you know sustain themselves with this farming so these are the work so far so didi what is your future plan well the baul says we don't even know if we get up next morning so <laughs> So no that of course but we need to have an aim of what what you want to do in future. So my whole thing is that you know once the lockdown is over that the ashram gets back to its normal routine of learning teaching and practicing. This is my first aim and also some of the work with the archive and everything is stuck because of situation right now. So to resume this normalcy you know in the life this is the my first focus. I would like to bring out a book on my Guruji, uh, which I'm working on, Shanatan Das Baul. There will be many more, you know, Divas. When we go ahead, we we find many more things, and I have created some uh, music uh, performance, music videos, which I will publish soon on the channels, YouTube channel. Okay. I'm yeah. waiting for that. So, musically, anything that you're doing? Uh, oh yes. Uh, you know i was working on this a lot because our life has become so much uh, based on the internet and the technology that i was creating performance 
with possibility of filming it and then present presenting it instead of live performance this is how i took part in many of the festivals in europe where i was supposed to be so i i was working on filming and i am working on charya giti charya giti is a which i have been working for a long time and now is a time that i'm st- i'm starting to publish them which is uh, will start getting published maybe from next month i have been working with uh, sri bahaudin dagaji who is a great uh, rudravina player he gave his sound to this songs these songs are the buddhist poetry that was uh, created in you know from 8th century onwards and we say these are the old form of baul songs oh. it will be a great honor if you can uh, sing this uh, for this show oh sure definitely i will sing one you see the language is old language which is mix of maithili and uh, sanskrit and uh, pali also some similarity with the language of odisha in the old time right. all this uh, land ongo bongo kolingo you know mm-hmm. we had kind of similar uh, culture and and similar language which we could understand each other all these uh, songs are written in this language hmm i will sing you a song of uh, bhusukupat who was a poet a siddhar and in this song he saying that uh, like a deer who doesn't know that the kasturi or the mask is coming from the body na no? smell the perfume of that mask is coming from the body so it goes around the forest not knowing where is the source of this smell similar way people go around all around the world not knowing that the truth that they are seeking for is inside them
रही न पैसे काहे काहे रे काहे रे घीने मिलिया अच्छा हो किसा काहे Wow, I was just taken to another world. Thank you so much, Didi. Thank you so much. Ah, you are most welcome. It was so much fun. I can't even explain. I had a really great time. This was so much of learning, so much of you know, like purity and divinity. Thank you so much, Didi. Thank you for and accepting to do this podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for listening to this podcast. Drop the mic is presented by the Space Dot Inc, a Bangla Live initiative. You can hear this podcast on all major podcast streaming sites. like google podcast apple podcast and spotify for listeners from india they can also check this podcast on gana.com if you have any suggestion then please write into us at editor@bangalore.com i will be back very very soon with another interesting personality till then take good care of yourself bye bye